Thanks for staying with us. Now, President Bola Tinubu has instructed the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC, to sell crude oil to Dangote Refinery and other new refineries in Naira. The decision announced by Special Advisor Bayon Onuga aims to stabilize both fuel pump prices and the dollar Naira exchange rate. The Federal Executive Council has approved this policy starting with Dangote Refinery, which needs 15 cargoes of crude oil annually at a cost of $13.5 billion. NNPC will supply four of these cargoes. The new arrangement involves offering the 450,000 barrels designated for, designated for domestic use in Naira to Nigeria refineries with Dangote Refinery as the initial pilot. The exchange rate for these transactions will be fixed and Afri Exim Bank, along with other Nigerian banks, will facilitate the trade, removing the need for international letters of credit and reducing dollar payment. Our guest to discuss this with us this morning is Mr. Bola Bolawole, a veteran journalist and public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, my brother. I'm happy to be here. Okay, uh, finally, we are, we've heard that Dangote will now be buying crude in Naira. Let's hear your opinion or your take on this. What effect will this have, really, on our economy? Yeah, thank you very much. That is the first ice that has to be broken on this matter. Dangote wanted to be buying crude in Naira. But the government was uh, the, uh, in, uh, the I IOC, that is the international oil uh, companies, wanted to sell in dollars. And their argument was that they paid the signature fees in dollars, all the equipment, all the exploration, processing, and whatever, everything was denominated in dollars. So they couldn't sell in Naira. And they were selling to their contract partners in dollars. So why should they now sell in Naira? Because Nigeria was not collecting money from them in uh, Naira. But now the government has decided that its own share of the uh, crude oil that is produced there will now be sold in Naira. So let's get it right. It's not the IOC that will be selling food to Dangote and the other refineries in Naira. No, those ones will not do. They are all, they are all part of uh, their own portion of the oil that the crude oil that is produced there, they will continue to sell to their buyers in dollars. But Nigeria will also sell part of its own uh, crude oil because it is a JPC arrangement, joint pension arrangement between Nigeria and the oil producing uh, companies. Maybe Nigeria has Nigeria has about sixty percent, some fifty uh, five or what percentage of oil that is produced. Now, out of Nigeria's own share, 450,000 barrels that they had been set aside for local consumption. It is that 450,000 barrels that have been set aside for local uh, consumption that will now be sold. Not all the crude oil that Nigeria uh, is entitled to. If Nigeria sells all the crude oil it's entitled to in Naira, to Dangote and the other refineries, we will not have it anything to sell in dollars, we will not be able to earn dollars. So it's just a portion. Assuming that uh, Nigeria produces 1.6 uh, million barrels per day, and that Nigeria's share of that 1.6, maybe 800 or 900,000 uh, barrels, so 450 out of that will be set aside, that have been set aside for local consumption, will now be sold to the oil companies in uh, Naira. But the remaining percentage will now be sold. Nigeria will continue to sell that, uh, uh, that percentage in dollars to its uh, contract uh, uh, partners. And don't also forget that these 450,000 that have been set aside will not be given to Dangote alone. Dangote is one of the oil uh, refineries that have come online. There are some other modular. Uh, refineries, like about four, five, or six of them, that are also rural to go. So they will share out of these 450,000 uh, uh, barrels of oil that Nigeria will now be selling in Naira. So all the 450,000 will not go to Dangote. It will go to all the other, uh, all, all the other refineries. And don't also forget that Dangote's needs is a 650,000 barrels per day. 
650,000 barrels per day. The 450,000 that have been set aside to be sold in Naira now, even if it is given to Dangote fully, cannot meet the needs of Dangote. So Dangote we still need to source for crude oil elsewhere. And I am sure you know that wherever he goes to source for crude oil, whether in Brazil or in the US or wherever, he is going to pay dollar in, in those areas. They are just going to collect Naira from him. And like you have just read out, his needs cannot be fully met. He needs about uh, 15 cargoes. And Nigeria is going to supply just four. So he still has to look elsewhere for 11 cargoes. So people who are already shouting, Eureka, there's a solution. They should know that the solution is limited. The solution is limited. I bet is a new, is, 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 a, is a positive sign that both the government, the NNPC, and Dangote, they are trying to reach an accommodation, reach an agreement. But that agreement has not fully solved the problem of Dangote, and it has not fully solved the problem of the other refineries. It has only gone a little bit. If somebody needs 15 and he gets only four, you know, he still has 11 to go. That is more than double, where you have triple what he still needs. So, where is he going to source for those ones? And how much is it going to cost it in dollars? And what impact is it going to have on the local price of a of a of a of a of a of product? Yeah. It's, we, we we have to see at the gone. It's it's worrisome because I, I was going to ask how much impact that will be. Four out of fifteen is is not very significant in number and all that and. Um, now that we're talking about other refineries sharing out of the 450,000, which is not even enough for Dangote alone and all. So now we're, we're at this point now where, where we're going to have, um, or, or let me just cut it to, to the point that we're thinking about how the impact will be on our economy. Are you saying there is nothing that's going to come out of this? Yeah, something is going to come out of it. There's going to be an impact. Depending on the agreement, we have not been told the agreement between the NNPC and the, and the, and the Djangote refinery. What is the agreement? Now, 450,000 barrels of crude oil have been set aside for local consumption. Now, my, my question, is Mr. Mr. Bolaoli, just a moment, Mr. Bolaoli. Yes. Um, the, the reason I, I, was, I was even asking is that are we not doing what they call pennywise pound foolish when we say that uh, if we do not uh, set, have some crude to sell out, we will not uh, get uh, N foreign exchange, N in dollars and all that. What is better to do? to have this crude sufficiently for our country to produce everything that we need here and export these finished products and then to sell the crude oil to the other countries and have them produce all those things and sell back to us. What will be more beneficial to us? What will earn us more dollars? Because if, if you sell out crude, that means you have, uh, the production of uh, candles, Vaseline, other things that come out of crude oil will be produced by those countries and sent back to us. And even the oil that we are going to be using for our for aviation industry and our cars and all that will also be refined from other countries and sold back to us. Are we gaining more by doing that or would gain more by producing here and doing everything in our country and exporting the end products? Can you hear me, Mr. Volaole? Yes, government has a lot of other obligations. Government will fund education. Government will fund the uh, hospitals. Government will pay salaries. Government will build roads. Government will fund security forces. So where is this money going to come from? If you give all the food oil you produce to Dangote and the oil refineries, and then they, they refine it, and they sell and they make profit. Are you going to share profit with them? What profit are they going to give you? Are they going to give you profit in Naira or are they going to give you profit in dollars? It doesn't work like that. All the crude oil that is produced in this country cannot be given to the refineries. You have contract obligations. NNPC has contract obligations with some of the people that has been supplying this uh, crude oil to, to, for, to, for ages. 
we have contract agreements with companies in India, in every other places that must buy our crude oil. Some of these people, if you are not aware, some of these foods that we have not yet produced have been sold up front by the previous government of uh, uh, Mohamedou Buhari. They're and still selling in this government. Into, NMPC is still selling in this government. Yes, since this government came into, uh, at least on one occasion now, this government had sold uh, crude oil up front and have collected dollars, and they were negotiating to sell another one the other time. So if you have sold, some of these crude that we are talking about had already been sold, and the money had been collected. It's like, uh, it's like uh, a worker who already collected his salary up front. So what he's doing now is just working for that salary. Nigeria has sold some of these products that we are producing up front. They no longer belong to us. They belong to our creditors who have paid us, we have collected the money, and we have spent the money, whatever. And now we must fulfill that obligation by supplying them the crude oil. So all the crude we are producing now, they no longer belong to us. It's only a percentage of it, a fraction of it that belongs to us. It is that fraction that we, the government will now think about what do we give to local refineries because of the problem that we have at hand. And what do we have left to sell so that we can, we can, we, we can, uh, we can uh, have money to run the government? The government must run. So, and it is not all crude oil, it is not all petroleum. <laughs> so, so, there are a lot of other services that government must provide for. Our embassies abroad must run, you must send them money. Your, your, your ambassadors, other things, you must send them money. There will be meetings to be uh, to, uh, to, uh, to attend, meetings of FOWAS, meetings of uh, AU, meetings of the uh, United Nations. You have meetings to attend, you must travel. And then uh, you have salaries to pay. You have uh, you have infrastructural deficits to meet up with. You have security issues. You must equip your army and face like that. So you you, you want you you want you have loans that you want to give students loans and things like that. So you must you must make money. And unfortunately for Nigeria, the way the place we are making all this money from is sale of crude oil. Crude oil accounts for about 80 something percent of the, of the money that we make. So if you now give all the crude oil to, a, to, to the refineries, what do you have left? What do I think the government can do, which I think they are trying to do, is to increase production. The general production quota used to be 2.2, 2.4. But because of a lot of factors, one of which is a crude oil theft, oil theft, you must be hearing about oil theft, oil theft. And you must also be hearing of the fact that the oil companies are complaining that Nigeria had not been reinvesting the money it was making from oil into the oil sector. We were just making the money and spending and squandering it. We were not investing enough money to discover new oil fields. So now the production has gone down. It went down up to below $1 million, $1 million barrels per day during Buhari. It is now that they are just trying to increase it. I understand that it's now hovering between 1.4 and 1.6. And out of this 1.4, between 1.6, about 50% of it is for the, the JVC partners, the oil companies. It's the remaining one that is our own. It is the one that is our own now that you must now find what to sell to make dollars, and you must also find what to give to the oil companies. So the solution will be when we are able to increase production, and it cannot be done overnight, because the oil companies are divesting and they are leaving this place. They are leaving because our government has not been making the the, the right of uh, the, the, the right uh, level of uh, investment and because of insecurity, insecurity in the country, insecurity in the oil sectors. You must understand that there was a time when there was this uh, uh, um, the movement for Niger, well, movement of the Niger Delta people meant, and when they were hijacking uh, uh, expatriate oil uh, oil workers, when they were sabotaging uh, pipelines and things like that, all those things have contributed to all these oil companies going to going elsewhere where the atmosphere is more favorable to them where there is security you can understand that the problem with security in nigeria has first start now and it has even gone further than even the uh, the niger letter area everywhere in the country now you have the problem of insecurity of banditry of Boko Haram, 
of uh, Pulani has made of people being driven away from the farms, people being driven away from their homes, from villages, and things like that. So all those things have impacted on oil production in Nigeria, such that and uh, when you now add food oil theft, at a point it was said that 70 percent of the oil that we were put up we were producing was being stolen. So you can imagine. So how much is left? So you know that the, those are the problems. They are the, the problems are so deep rooted. The problems are uh, the problems are not problems that you can solve overnight. So, but a lot of people don't understand the integrity of where we are, where we are, where we are, we are, because of decades of neglect, decades of corruption, decades of uh, of profligacy, making money and squandering the money. We can't see what the money has been spent on. That's not been spent on agriculture. That's not been spent in industrialization. You begin to ask yourself all the debt we have amassed. Where is the evidence? What did we spend all this money for? And all the all the the, the crude oil we sold up front, all the all, all the loans we collected, where are they? What are they spent for? What are they spent for? And why are we in this situation? I think those are the problems that confront the nation at the moment. Okay, just just uh, like a summary, what do you think uh, the steps of Nigeria should be at this point? Because it's even though we we, we are not even sure that the Potakot refinery will come up and uh, Kaduna refinery and all of that refineries will come up. You're talk to, talking about some modular refineries that will kickstart in a, a few days or a few months time or in in a short while. It's going to be really really. Uh, a thing if it's going to be only 450,000 barrels that will be shared among all these refineries. If we have, let's say, five modular refineries and then there's Dangote and all that, it will still be like uh, everything is being imported from, from outside, and which I, I, I don't even see how it makes any sense. Uh, we are producing oil, then, yes, then, then, yes. then importing crude from outside. It doesn't make sense to me. So what steps should the government put in place right now yeah, to make sure that we don't get to a point where we are lacking? Yes, it makes sense if you want. Yes, it makes sense if you understand the problem. If we remove some of the problems that we have. How do we find ourselves here? What? How do we get out of it? If and then we can find a solution. It. If we bring sentiments into it, you will discover that you will not be able to identify the problems. And for as long as you cannot identify the problems, you will not be able to propose solutions. Now, the four fifty thousand barriers per day that the government has pledged, let us hope they can get it. I am not sure. A lot of people are not sure that they can get it. It doesn't appear as if they have up to. 450,000 barrels per day, that is their own portion. But if they do, and they can they can release 450 out of what they have, they have made a sacrifice. That means that they have just little left to sell and make dollars. So if they have made that sacrifice, then the oil companies should also, the oil refineries should also make sacrifice. They should also know that this 450,000 barrels that has been released to them, is supposed to be refined and sold locally. That was the amount that we projected that we were consuming locally. So if that projection is still standing, if we are still consuming 450,000, if, if, the, if the volume of oil consumption by Nigeria staff, if it has not increased, and if we can stem the, the tide of, uh, of smuggling of all this refined product, because you know that smuggling is one of the problems even now that we have uh, we have deregulated and we have increased fuel prices, our, our oil is still being our, our petrol is still being smuggled uh, across the border. So because it is still cheaper here now than it is there, because we are still subsidizing under the counter, so it is cheaper here than it is in Benin Republic than it is in Cameroon. So they are still smuggling our and our our oil, our food, our petrol there. So when Nigerians say that they want to buy, they want to they want uh, we want. Uh, petrol because I'm one of them. I want petrol, we want petrol, we want the price to come down. What we are saying is that we want us to add to the subsidy we are giving to our neighboring countries because 
the more, like how we are, we are buying oil for you say seven hundred or whatever. We will go across the across the border. They will be selling for about eight fifty or nine hundred there. So the, the so once the price comes down here, then we will come here and get this oil. Our people are the ones that will smuggle it across the border there yeah, to go and sell there and make profit. So this problem of uh, fuel price is not as easy as people are saying because the borders are porous. We are not able to control our to 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 to, to, to police our borders. Our fuel continues to go there, so we continue to subsidize. And then the problem also is that when we say we are consuming 450,000 uh, barrels per day, that's for Nigerians. You must now calculate what they are consuming in the Benin Republic. You must now calculate what they are consuming, consuming in the Niger Republic, what they are consuming in Cameroon. You must add it to what we are consuming here locally. That is what you have to provide for. That is the problem there. But if this property is released onto them and they can refine it and they can now decide that the okay, government has done this for us, we are paying in the in Naira, so let us bring the price down. They can bring the price down. But I, I can assure you that the more they bring the price down, the more smuggling of the same product will increase. The more the products will cross the border to all these other countries, the more the 450,000 will not be adequate for us. We'll be back to square one. So the problem really is not just about uh, uh, do we get good oil to Dangote. Even if we give the Dangote the 650,000 barrels that Dangote needs, you will still have the problem of smuggling of these products. You can imagine when a product is smuggled up to the Republic, up to uh, Togo, up to, up to Ghana, and other places like that, it's smuggling in Niger, in Cameroon, and those places. So you, you want to also calculate the number of people there, the population that the, that's relying on this, I was saying, you okay. find that there is no barriers that you get that will be adequate. All right. So the problem is intertwined. But with this solution that they have provided, they may be on the way to ameliorating, I say ameliorating, solving, ameliorating the problem, not completely solving it. To solve the problem, is a lot of is a, is a lot of work has to be done, and it has to be, we have to okay. look beyond our borders All because right. this problem can be fully solved. Okay. Uh, well, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Bola Bola Ole, for coming on our program. This is where we'll have to drop it this morning. It's a pleasure having you on the show this morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've been talking to Mr. Bola Bola Ole, a veteran journalist and public affairs analyst, on uh, the uh, fact that uh, it has been approved that Dangote Refinery can now buy crude in Naira. We are going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll take our last hot topic. Stay with us.